Uruguay, officially the Eastern Republic of Uruguay, is a country in the southeastern region of South America. It is bordered by Argentina to its west and Brazil to its north and east, with the Atlantic Ocean to the south and southeast. Uruguay is home to 3.3 million people, of whom 1.8 million live in the metropolitan area of its capital and largest city, Montevideo with an area of approximately 176,000 square kilometers. Uruguay is geographically the second smallest nation in South America after Suriname. Uruguay was inhabited by the Charua people for approximately 4,000 years before the Portuguese invaded. Portugal established Colonia del Sacramento, one of the oldest European settlements in the country, in 1680. Montevideo was founded as a military stronghold by the Spanish in the early 18th century, signifying the competing claims over the region. Uruguay won its independence between 1811 and 1828, following a four-way struggle between Spain, Portugal, Argentina and Brazil. It remained subject to foreign influence and intervention throughout the 19th century with the military playing a recurring role in domestic politics until the late 20th century. Modern Uruguay is a democratic constitutional republic with a president who serves as both head of state and head of government. Uruguay is ranked first in Latin America in democracy, peace, lack of corruption, quality of living, e-government and equally first in South America when it comes to press freedom, size of the middle class, prosperity and security. On a per capita basis, Uruguay contributes more troops to United Nations peacekeeping missions than any other country. It ranks second in the region on economic freedom, income equality, per capita income and inflows of FDI. Uruguay is the third best country on the continent in terms of HDR, GDP growth, innovation and infrastructure. It is regarded as a high-income country by the UN, the only one in Latin America. Uruguay is also the third best ranked in the world in e-participation. Uruguay is an important global exporter of combed wool, rice, soybeans, frozen beef, malt and milk. The Economist named Uruguay Country of the Year in 2013 acknowledging the innovative policy of legalizing the production, sale and consumption of cannabis. Same-sex marriage and abortion are also legal, leading Uruguay to be regarded as one of the most liberal nations in the world, and one of the most socially developed, outstanding regionally and performing well globally on personal rights, tolerance and inclusion issues. Etymology. The name of the name Sake River comes from the Spanish pronunciation of the regional Guarani word for it. There are several interpretations, including Bird River. The name could also refer a river snail called Uruguay that was plentiful in the water. In Spanish colonial times, and for some time thereafter, Uruguay and some neighboring territories were called the Cisplatina and Banda Oriental del Uruguay, then for a few years the Eastern Province and after independence ultimately became La República Oriental del Uruguay, translated either as the Oriental Republic of Uruguay or the Eastern Republic of Uruguay. History The only documented inhabitants of Uruguay before European colonization of the area were the Charua, a small tribe driven south by the Guarani of Paraguay. Early colonization The Portuguese discovered the region of present-day Uruguay in 1512. The Spanish arrived in present-day Uruguay in 1516. The indigenous people's fierce resistance to conquest combined with the absence of gold and silver, limited their settlement in the region during the 16th and 17th centuries. Uruguay then became a zone of contention between the Spanish and Portuguese empires. In 1603, the Spanish began to introduce cattle, which became a source of wealth in the region. The first permanent Spanish settlement was founded in 1624 at Soriano on the Rio Negro. In 1669-71, the Portuguese built a fort at Colonia del Sacramento. Spanish colonization increased as Spain sought to limit Portugal's expansion of Brazil's frontiers. 
Montevideo was founded by the Spanish in the early 18th century as a military stronghold in the country. Its natural harbor soon developed into a commercial area competing with Rio de la Plata's capital, Buenos Aires. Uruguay's early 19th century history was shaped by ongoing fights for dominance in the Platan region, between British, Spanish, Portuguese and other colonial forces. In 1806 and 1807, the British army attempted to seize Buenos Aires and Montevideo as part of the Napoleonic Wars. Montevideo was occupied by a British force from February to September 1807. Independence struggle in 1811, Jose de Vega Artigas, who became Uruguay's national hero, launched a successful revolution against the Spanish authorities, defeating them on 18 May at the Battle of Las Piedras. In 1813, the new government in Buenos Aires convened a constituent assembly where Artigas emerged as a champion of federalism, demanding political and economic autonomy for each area, and for the Banda Oriental in particular. The assembly refused to seat the delegates from the Banda Oriental, however, and Buenos Aires pursued a system based on unitary centralism. As a result, Artigas broke with Buenos Aires and besieged Montevideo, taking the city in early 1815. Once the troops from Buenos Aires had withdrawn, the Banda Oriental appointed its first autonomous government. Artigas organized the Federal League under his protection, consisting of six provinces, four of which later became part of Argentina. In 1816, a force of 10,000 Portuguese troops invaded the Banda Oriental from Brazil. They took Montevideo in January 1817. After nearly four more years of struggle Portuguese Brazil annexed the Banda Oriental as a province under the name of Cisplatina. The Brazilian Empire became independent from Portugal in 1822. In response to the annexation, the 33 Orientals, led by Juan Antonio Lavalleja, declared independence on 25 August 1825 supported by the United Provinces of the Rio de la Plata. This led to the 500-day-long Cisplatan War. Neither side gained the upper hand and in 1828 the Treaty of Montevideo, fostered by the United Kingdom, gave birth to Uruguay as an independent state. The nation's first constitution was adopted on 18 July 1830. Blanco's Colorado's conflicts at the time of independence, Uruguay had an estimated population of just under 75,000. The political scene in Uruguay became split between two parties, the conservative Blancos headed by Manuel Uribe, representing the agricultural interests of the countryside, and the liberal Colorados led by Fructuoso Rivera, representing the business interests of Montevideo. The Uruguayan parties became associated with warring political factions in neighboring Argentina. The Colorados favored the exiled Argentine liberal Unitarios, many of whom had taken refuge in Montevideo while the Blanco president Manuel Uribe was a close friend of the Argentine ruler Manuel de Roses. On 15 June 1838, an army led by the Colorado leader Rivera overthrew the president, who fled to Argentina. Rivera declared war on Roses in 1839. The conflict would last 13 years and become known as the Guerra Grande. In 1843, an Argentine army overran Uruguay on Oreb's behalf, but failed to take the capital. The siege of Montevideo, which began in February 1843, would last nine years. The besieged Uruguayans called on resident foreigners for help, which led to a French and an Italian legion being formed the latter led by the exiled Giuseppe Garibaldi. In 1845, Britain and France intervened against Rosas to restore commerce to normal levels in the region. Their efforts proved ineffective and, by 1849, tired of the war, both withdrew after signing a treaty favorable to Rosas. It appeared that Montevideo would finally fall when an uprising against Rosas led by Justo José de Roque, the governor of Argentina's Entre Rios province began. 
The Brazilian intervention in May 1851 on behalf of the Colorados, combined with the uprising, changed the situation and Oribe was defeated. The siege of Montevideo was lifted and the Guerra Grande finally came to an end. Montevideo rewarded Brazil's support by signing treaties that confirmed Brazil's right to intervene in Uruguay's internal affairs. In accordance with the 1851 treaties, Brazil intervened militarily in Uruguay as often as it deemed necessary. In 1865, the Triple Alliance was formed by the Emperor of Brazil, the President of Argentina, and the Colorado General Venancia Flores the Uruguayan head of government whom they both had helped to gain power. The Triple Alliance declared war on the Paraguayan leader Francisco Solano Lopez and the resulting Paraguayan war ended with the invasion of Paraguay and its defeat by the armies of the three countries. Montevideo, which was used as a supply station by the Brazilian Navy, experienced a period of prosperity and relative calm during the war. The constitutional government of General Lorenzo Battler y Grau was forced to suppress an insurrection led by the National Party. After two years of struggle, a peace agreement was signed in 1872 that gave the Blancos a share in the emoluments and functions of government. Through control of four of the departments of Uruguay, this establishment of the policy of co-participation represented the search for a new formula of compromise based on the coexistence of the party in power and the party in opposition. Between 1875 and 1886, the military became the center of power. During this authoritarian period, the government took steps toward the organization of the country as a modern state, encouraging its economic and social transformation. Pressure groups were organized and had a strong influence on government. A transition period followed, during which politicians began recovering lost ground and some civilian participation in government occurred. Mass immigration and development after the Guerra Grande, there was a sharp rise in the number of immigrants, primarily from Italy and Spain. By 1879, the total population of the country was over 438,500. The economy saw a steep upswing, above all in livestock raising and exports. Montevideo became a major economic center of the region and an entrepot for goods from Argentina, Brazil and Paraguay. 20th century The Colorado leader José Batla y Ordenez was elected president in 1903. The following year, the Blancos led a rural revolt and eight bloody months of fighting ensued before their leader, Aparicio Saravia, was killed in battle. Government forces emerged victorious, leading to the end of the co-participation politics that had begun in 1872. Battler had two terms during which, taking advantage of the nation's stability and growing economic prosperity, he instituted major reforms such as a welfare program, government participation in many facets of the economy, and a plural executive. Gabriel Terra became president in March 1931. His inauguration coincided with the effects of the Great Depression, and the social climate became tense as a result of the lack of jobs. There were confrontations in which police and leftists died. In 1933, Terra organized a coup d'état, TAT, dissolving the General Assembly and governing by decree. A new constitution was promulgated in 1934, transferring powers to the president. In general, the Terra government weakened or neutralized economic nationalism and social reform. In 1938, general elections were held and Terra's brother-in-law, General Alfredo Baldemir, was elected president. Under pressure from organized labor and the National Party, Baldemir advocated free elections, freedom of the press, and a new constitution. Although Baldemir declared Uruguay neutral in 1939, British warships and the German ship Admiral Graf P fought a battle not far off Uruguay's coast. The Admiral Graf P took refuge in Montevideo, claiming sanctuary in a neutral port, but was later ordered out. 
In the late 1950s, partly because of a worldwide decrease in demand for agricultural products, Uruguayans suffered from a steep drop in their standard of living, which led to student militancy and labor unrest. An armed group known as the Tupamarosa emerged in the 1960s, engaging in activities such as bank robbery, kidnapping and assassination. In addition to attempting an overthrow the government, President George Pacheco declared a state of emergency in 1968, followed by a further suspension of civil liberties in 1972. In 1973, amid increasing economic and political turmoil, the armed forces, asked by the President Juan Maria Bodaberry, closed the Congress and established a civilian military regime. Around 200 Uruguayans are known to have been killed and disappeared with hundreds more illegally detained and tortured during the 12-year civil military rule of 1973 to 1985. Most were killed in Argentina and other neighboring countries, with 36 of them having been killed in Uruguay. Return to Democracy A new constitution, drafted by the military, was rejected in a November 1980 referendum. Following the referendum, the armed forces announced a plan for the return to civilian rule, and national elections were held in 1984. Colorado Party leader Julio Maria Sanguinetti won the presidency and served from 1985 to 1990. The first Sanguinetti administration implemented economic reforms and consolidated democracy following the country's years under military rule. The National Party's Luis Alberto Lacol won the 1989 presidential election and amnesty for human rights abusers was endorsed by referendum. Sanguinetti was then re-elected in 1994. Both presidents continued the economic structural reforms initiated after the reinstatement of democracy, and other important reforms were aimed at improving the electoral system, social security, education, and public safety. The 1999 national elections were held under a new electoral system established by a 1996 constitutional amendment. Colorado Party candidate George Battler, aided by the support of the National Party, defeated broad front candidate Tabare Vasquez. The formal coalition ended in November 2002, when the Blancos withdrew their ministers from the cabinet. Although the Blancos continued to support the Colorados on most issues, low commodity prices and economic difficulties in Uruguay's main export markets caused a severe recession, the economy contracted by 11%. Unemployment climbed to 21%, and the percentage of Uruguayans in poverty rose to over 30%. In 2004, Uruguayans elected to Barre Vazquez as president, while giving the broad front a majority in both houses of parliament. Vazquez stuck to economic orthodoxy. As commodity prices soared and the economy recovered from recession, he tripled foreign investment, cut poverty and unemployment, cut public debt from 79% of GDP to 60%, and kept inflation steady. In 2009, Jose Mujica, a former left-wing militant who spent almost 15 years in prison during the country's military rule, emerged as the new president as the Broad Front won the election for a second time. Abortion was legalized in 2012, followed by same-sex marriage and cannabis in the following year. Geography with 176,214 square kilometers of continental land and 142,199 square kilometers of jurisdictional water and small river islands, Uruguay is the second smallest sovereign nation in South America and the third smallest territory. The landscape features mostly rolling plains and low hill ranges with a fertile coastal lowland. Uruguay has 660 kilometers of coastline. A dense fluvial network covers the country, consisting of four river basins, or deltas. The Rio de la Plata Basin, the Uruguay River, the Laguna Marine and the Rio Negro. The major internal river is the Rio Negro. Several lagoons are found along the Atlantic coast. 
The highest point in the country is the Cerro Cathedral, whose peak reaches 514 meters AMSL in the Sierra Carapé Hill Range. To the southwest is the Rio de la Plata, the estuary of the Uruguay River. Montevideo is the southernmost capital city in the Americas, and the third most southerly in the world. There are ten national parks in Uruguay, five in the wetland areas of the east, three in the central hill country, and one in the west along the Rio Uruguay. Flora Uruguay has about 2,500 species distributed in 150 biological families, both native and foreign. Cabo, or Erythrina crista is the national flower in Uruguay. Climate Located entirely within a temperate zone, Uruguay has a climate that is relatively mild and fairly uniform nationwide. Seasonal variations are pronounced but extremes in temperature are rare, as would be expected with its abundance of water, high humidity and fog are common. The absence of mountains, which act as weather barriers, makes all locations vulnerable to high winds and rapid changes in weather as fronts or storms sweep across the country. Both summer and winter weather may vary from day to day with the passing of storm fronts where a hot northerly wind may occasionally be followed by a cold wind from the Argentine Pampas. Uruguay has a largely uniform temperature throughout the year, with summers being tempered by winds off the Atlantic. Severe cold in winter is unknown. The heaviest precipitation occurs during the autumn months, although more frequent rainy spells occur in winter. The mean annual precipitation is generally greater than 40 inches, decreasing with distance from the sea coast and is relatively evenly distributed throughout the year. The average temperature for the midwinter month of July varies from 12 degrees Celsius at Salto in the northern interior to 9 degrees Celsius at Montevideo in the south. The midsummer month of January varies from a warm average of 26 degrees Celsius at Salto to 22 degrees Celsius at Montevideo. National extreme temperatures at sea level are Paysandú City 44 degrees Celsius and Melo City minus 11.0 degrees Celsius.